For us, the main priorities have been looking at people who have been displaced into camps and other sites, checking out what the situation is in terms of their health care, public health risks um, and other, other factors that can be addressed. Also, the other key priority is looking into those patients who have been injured from the earthquake um, and evacuated into hospitals and making sure that they have a safe and healthy discharge from there. People may have been treated and may not have acute injury um, needs anymore, but it's really important to make sure they're getting the appropriate physiotherapy, follow-up, rehabilitation, and then also taken back home and ensure they have a shelter to go to. Many people with injuries not only lost uh, potentially function of their limbs, um, but also their houses and livelihoods as well, and so they're some of the most vulnerable that we need to take care of. Thirdly, we're looking also into the psychosocial impacts of the, of the earthquake. Obviously there's a significant amount of, uh, of losses of life as property um, and as a, a very traumatic event as well, particularly with the uh, second earthquake that was felt just a few days ago, which has um, led to you know, um, reinvigorating all of those traumatic feelings and, and re-displacing people. So we're ensuring that um, our approaches are in line with international guidelines for psychosocial assistance and also training our other um, staff members to go ahead in that approach. So after a disaster, particularly a big natural disaster like this, um, there obviously is an increase in, um, in psychosocial distress. Um, although there isn't necessarily a large increase in mental illness, it's very important to make sure that people are being taken care of, um, their needs are being taken care of, their basic needs in terms of food, shelter, um, and finding out more about the situation, connecting them with loved ones and community services. This is the basis of psychosocial approaches, as well as identifying those that do have um, additional needs um, and may need some counselling or further intervention which is a smaller um, amount of the population. However, following the second earthquake, which happened only two weeks after the first major one, this has really um, brought up a lot of those feelings of anxiety, uncertainty, and really has led to a lot of people leaving those homes and having these basic conditions necessary for psychosocial sort of cohesiveness amongst the community that's really been disrupted by the second earthquake, reliving the same experiences and starting back from square one for many people. So it's my first time in Nepal, but um, first thing to say, it's an amazingly beautiful country with beautiful people as well, um, really strong community spirit, um, and very, very disheartening to see the, the damage and destruction being done by this earthquake. Hundreds of thousands of people have lost their home, and being up in, the, um, in some of the affected outer districts yesterday, up in Chautara, Sindhapaltrup, seeing the real scale of devastation um, is really you know, sad to see. There's been a loss of a lot of cultural, um, cultural icons and infrastructure. There's a loss of people's houses, um, their livelihoods, um, as well as disruption of, of people's general ability to cope in these what can be quite trying circumstances, particularly with the monsoon um, and winter coming. So it's really important that you know we're here and we're doing as much as we can, bringing people from across the world um, and mobilising local communities to try and um, improve the situation as much as we can. But it's going to be a long road ahead, I think, um, for people to get back to where they were before.